One of the best things I ever did for my finances was to take control of my spending by creating a budget that actually works for me. And if hearing the word budget conjured up an image of yourself sitting at home all by yourself alone, bored, eating cold beans straight out of a can, I totally get it. I used to think it was a terribly dull word too. And also I kind of hate beans, so the idea of this actually terrifies me. The actual reality of sticking to a budget is that it's so rewarding. And after even just a few weeks of taking that control, it's actually a lot of fun. So if you're tired of feeling your way around in the dark when it comes to your money, then a budget reset is just what you need. And this budgeting for beginners guide is gonna help you get started. There will be no beans involved. First of all, before you get started with the practical stuff, it's a good idea to consider your relationship with and attitude towards money. So much of our spending habits are tied to our emotions and how we feel about spending, how it makes us feel and what triggers us to spend. We may find the idea of actually looking at our finances in granular detail intimidating, or you may be caught in a loop where spending makes you feel incredible in the moment and then there's that horrible moment when it dawns on you that you actually can't afford it. Or we may feel that money is so tight that there's no point in setting a budget because it just feels impossible. Start this process by resetting your money mindset. And remind yourself that the positive thing about numbers is that they don't lie and you can use those facts to your advantage. We can make a plan based on those facts that we know and it's just down to us to stick to that plan and follow through. So a good start is to commit to being more aware of where your money is going and what is triggering you to spend money. What are your reasons for spending? Once you understand why you may be overspending, then you can start to make some positive changes. If you have trouble with impulse spending like I do, then this is a good time to think about what your triggers are. Is it certain brands? Is it certain people that you follow on Instagram? Is it when you've had a really, really bad day at work? Is it when you've been stressed out with the kids or is it boredom? Now think about alternatives to shopping that can entertain you or cheer you up. And also consider ways that you can block yourself from following through on those urges to spend. Now this might involve unsubscribing from certain brands that tempt you to spend. It could even involve deleting your card details from your smartphone so that if you were to buy something, you'd have to actually physically enter the details. And that just creates a little bit of friction in the purchasing process. Remember that there is no purchase that can feel as good in the long run as being in control of your money. Now let's get on to the practical stuff. First of all, if wrestling with your budget feels like a daunting task, you can make it super easy by getting help with analyzing and tracking your spending thanks to the Emma Premium Budgeting app. After linking your bank accounts, credit cards and other financial accounts, you can use the app's fantastic features in order to track and analyze expenses. In order to ultimately feel confident when you do spend your money. Emma organizes all my transactions for me and tells me my average spend per category. And Emma also lets me know what I can afford to spend before I head out the door. This is such a useful reality check and I just love the way the app looks and how easy it is to navigate. I can see how much I've spent at specific brands and I've been using this to challenge myself to bring down my Tesco spend. And this pie chart feature is a brilliant way of visualizing exactly where it is that your money is going every month. I can set custom budgets for big stuff like groceries, as well as things like little treats for the kids. They love to have an ice cream or a smoothie when I take them to the park. The granular detail that the app gives me means that when I do spend, I can do so guilt-free because I know it's all a part of my grand budgeting plan. You can get started with a free trial of Emma's all-in-one financial membership right now. There's a link in the description below, so do go and check that out. When you're setting a budget, whether it's the first time or whether it's a reset, the best place to start is to review where your money is actually going. This way you can easily identify areas of overspending and also think of creative ways to cut back. You can only make changes once you're armed with the information of where the money is actually going. Start with all of your fixed expenses. That's all of your direct debits that you're committed to on a monthly basis, as well as annual bills. Fixed expenses include things like your mortgage or your rent, childcare costs, energy bills, your insurance, car payments, subscriptions, and things like kids after school clubs and classes. At this stage, you may already see a few red flags, which is great, but don't worry if you don't because we're only just getting started. Next, you wanna look at your variable spending. These are things where the cost fluctuates from month to month, and it can be useful as part of this exercise to differentiate here between what is a need and what is a want. Two very different things. 
For example, new school shoes for your kids are a need. Any extra clothing that isn't replacing something, any new household decor bits, any brand new gadgets that weren't desperately needed, those all go under your wants. Of course, your variable expenses fluctuate from month to month, but try and give yourself a rough baseline figure of what you're spending on this type of stuff every single month. Of course, you don't need to buy brand new school shoes for your kids every single month. Their feet don't grow that quickly, thank goodness but it's wise to have a rough monthly budget allocated towards that kind of stuff, school supplies, the things that may come up regularly, they're not necessarily every single month. You need to try and spread the cost across the course of the year. Another variable expense is food. Be sure to separate your supermarket spending from your restaurant and takeaway spending. You need to eat, of course, but you can cut back on restaurant and takeaway spending if that's contributing to you overspending every month. Now you've got those variable and fixed expenses written down, you can take a look at those numbers and compare them to your income. Now, whether you're spending more than your income or you do have a little bit of money left at the end of every single month, or maybe you have a decent chunk of money left at the end of every single month, it's still a good idea now at this stage to think about ways that you could potentially cut back on spending. This is a budget reset. It's a good opportunity to review those expenses, make sure you're getting best value for money and seeing if your money is going on any things that actually you don't really need. And this makes more room for saving and ensures that your money is going on the things that you really love and the things that you really need. At this point, you may be able to see some really obvious areas where you can trim the fat. Are there subscriptions that you could cancel? Does your grocery spend seem a little bit high? Have you been wasting food regularly? Is there a different way of meal planning that you could try so that you ensure that you're not wasting any bit of the food that you buy in your weekly shop? And this is where that money mindset adjustment that we talked about can really, really help you to focus in on ways to cut back on your expenses. One of the best habits that I adopted to cut back on my spending was to always ask myself these questions before I went ahead and made a purchase. First, I establish if I actually need it. Then I think about if I can get it cheaper elsewhere. Then I consider if there's a cheaper alternative or if I can get a discount voucher to get some money off. And finally, I always get cash back wherever I can. If you look at your variable expenses, you'll find that you can apply this to everything from household gadgets to groceries. With fixed expenses, you may find you can get better deals on your insurance, mobile phone and broadband. Most places want to keep your business and will offer you a deal if you threaten to jump ship. For example, when I've gone to Council Now TV before, they've offered me a significantly reduced price on the monthly subscription cost. Intentional spending is crucial to preventing a below the budget situation. It simply means that you are prioritizing certain things in your budget and making clear choices when it comes to spending your money rather than knee-jerk impulse purchasing, which puts you at risk of overspending. Once you've established where your money is going and figured out a budget to help you spend below your means, now you can think about your fun money budget and what you're actually gonna spend it on. What are the things that you really love that really bring you joy? Budgeting doesn't mean cutting out all wants. It simply means that you prioritize where your money is going and make a plan ahead of time to ensure that you can afford it. So for me this year, this has included planning a girl's long weekend away. It's certainly not a need, but it's going to bring me a lot of joy. So I've made a plan within my budget in order to pay for it. And another example of this is fun days out for my kids. I'm happy to make room in the budget for memorable experiences for them, like visiting London Zoo over the school holidays. In order to do this, I cut back on my wants, so I'm prioritizing the things that really matter, and I also cut back on the spending on my needs so that I'm getting the best value for my purchases. When you take a step back to really analyze your priorities, it can be a bit of a wake up call, because it often won't include a lot of the stuff that your money is actually going on, like the last minute takeaway or the brand new outfit that you didn't actually need. Part of any good budget is how much you allocate to saving. Some savings rules suggest that you should try to allocate 20% of your income to saving. I am freelance, so my income fluctuates from month to month, so I just do my best to put as much as I possibly can into savings. So if I have an unexpected bumper month, I try to put that extra money into savings rather than just spending it. Now it can help to have a goal in mind, but it's not a complete necessity. Saving is a good idea, even if you have nothing in particular in mind for it, because at some point you are probably going to need some money for something. Would you like to build up an emergency fund? Maybe you'd like to pay for a renovation of your home. Whatever it is that you want to save for, make your longer term goals part of your budget because you will get there with baby steps. 
As promised, this budget reset did not include any cold beans. You don't need extreme frugality to save money. You just need a budget and motivation to make small changes that can add up to a big difference. Please don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe for more from me.